Uh, let me level with you. I got no MOT. I got no indicators. I got no windscreen. And I'm about to tear the seat out because it's just doing my head in. Let me get this intro out of the way and we'll get right into it. All right, folks, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, um, this is a bit more of a deep dive into the transporter thing. Um, and whilst recording this video, I made a rookie mistake. I did forget to turn the mic on while I was doing a bunch of the stuff that you're about to watch. So we're gonna have to voice that stuff over, which is not as good as the real thing, but hey. Um, yeah, so diving in, uh, no MOT on the van, and that's because I have a shot windscreen um, and I've also got no indicators on one side so we're going to dive into that and the seat is, is something else I want to discuss the uh, rib, the RIB uh, spinny seat thing so to kick things off let's get into the first thing on the list which is the windscreen so um, just unfortunate driving it a few miles down the road and a rock came up or somewhere uh, flew over and just took out some big old chunks in the windscreen right before the MOT was due because we're sitting on five years now can you believe that five years that's mental. I mean, it's gone so fast and it is the longest vehicle I've ever owned now. I mean, it was when we got to four years, uh, but now we're at five and there's still no signs of me parting with it. Um, more stuff in store and all that. Um, but yeah, five years. So um, at the time of shooting the original footage of this video, it was pre bus fest and it was coming up a matter of days away from the MOT. So get in touch with a glass company. Uh, to get the windscreen replaced and um, unfortunately they can't do it so officially I had to sort of sit tight until they could get some glass. So guy came and he threw the glass into it and um, did a good job. Took him a while because it was baking hot. I mean it was, it was one of them really hot days we had. Um, better that than rain though I suppose because he did it on drive and um, yeah it's all back in now and uh, that's the immediate problem solved but also I had a situation with my indicators so the, what, they're all aftermarket by now the front the back and the sides but it's actually the side repeater that I had noticed a couple of months ago that just wasn't working um, I thought maybe it might be just a loose connection or some weather or something like that but I had a fiddle with it and I couldn't get that thing to work so it was time to reach out to Transport HQ because they've got a bunch of different ones on their website the original ones that have failed are not from H uh, Transport HQ um, but yeah I logged onto the website and I could see there was a few choices so spoke to uh, Transport HQ and they uh, kindly sent me the um, their version of the uh, ultra bright if I'm getting this right um, LED sequential um, indicators I think they're clear or smoked or something like that I shall put a link to the actual one in the description below but yeah getting into the fitting of those um, and the difference compared to the ones I took out, I was really impressed. So the connection on the back of the light is different to the one I've taken off, and it's a lot better. The one I took off was just like a spade type of connector that goes into the filament bulb area. That's corroded up and I'm possibly the nature of the problem with them. But this time, with the ones from Transport HQ, as you can see by the shots here that um, the connections way better it's a lot more OEM and uh, durable so pretty impressed with that just one other thing uh, I just noticed as well that the Transport HQ have sent me a catalogue with mine um, this says volume 3 on it so I presume there's been a couple of ones before it but just inside this there's quite a lot of very tempting stuff this is not good if you have a weak resistance balance but 
it's actually very handy to see it all in a catalogue like the good old days instead of everything being on a blooming uh, mobile phone screen or whatever. Anyway, shout out to that. Uh, I gather you can just request one or you might get one with a gift you buy, but yeah, cool to see. Anyway, let's get these thrown on the van and see what they're like, see how bright they are. So I'll do both sides. I'll throw one on and show you what it looks like with it fitted and then versus the other side. And uh, yeah, see what they look like. I'm going to change this side first um, just because it will be a good comparison against a stock indicator so we'll see how bright they are compared. Um, if you're wondering how you take these off, how you got your, get your stock one off, uh, up here, you'll notice at the curved end, so at the left side of this indicator, there is a clip, if you can see that, okay, which is pushing it into the wing, and there is a sticky pad up this end. So up by the door, you need to use a trim tool just to gently prise that foam tape off, and then you can release it and you can unclip it. So prise it at the door side, be careful not to damage your panels, use a bit of cloth or something and a trim tool, and you can prise that tape off clean up the wing, put the new one in, unstick it, flip it. Super easy driveway mod this. Anyway, let's get it on and see what it looks like. Okay, so this is the before. And this is the after. So this is the Transporter HQ Ultra Bright. And they are bright. I'm not sure if the camera is going to do this justice, but that is in real life eye bleedingly bright. You are going to know when I'm doing it now. Oh, yeah. All right, so one of the last things I wanted to bring up today in this video was about the RIB passenger seat that I've got. Um, I'm done with it. I. I on this channel, I'm pretty honest about what's good and what's not, and it's time to re-reflect on that. Um, I fit them in about two and a half, three years ago, I think, two and a half years ago. Uh, so there are thereabouts, and if anybody's familiar with the channel, you might have seen that video where I put the driver's one in, and with and I needed to go and use the van before it fitted the passion site, and I had to rip it straight back out because it was ridiculously high. Um, made the van's driving position feel awful. I think the only way you could survive with that on the driver's seat is if you had never driven the van before and you just acquire it like that because then you don't really kind of know how it used to be. Um, but for me that just wasn't going to work and it had to come straight out. Now, two and a half years later, I've been putting up with a passenger seat rocking about where no one's sat in it it's the backrest is moving squeaking i mean the squeaking you could solve it's just a bit of grease i'm sure but the moving of the seat and then there's kind of the fact that when someone sits in it they're dwarfing you um i love what the seat can do when the seat turns around that's really useful and we do use that so i've been putting up with it because of that but at the moment, I just think I've come to the end with it. It's just getting on my nerves too much now. And I just want to put the seats back in how they were. Nice height. There's a battery underneath there. So I can't do any chopping down on that seat box uh, or anything like that for mine. Because the battery is literally coming out of the top. It's it's only just it's just enough at the moment. It just fits, but so I can't trim the actual base down or anything like that to make it work. But you know what? I think I just I'm going to rip it out now. It's not going to get any better, you see. Yeah, yeah, I'll go it. I'm going to go and do it now. Be back. <laughs>
Right, well, I'm feeling better already. Um, it's out and the seat just feels so much better to sit in at that height as a passenger side. Nice to see them level as well across, but yeah, I'm gonna miss what the seat can do. We really do use that. I think I mentioned that earlier before I got into it. And yeah, it's a shame that we can't have that in there. And you know, it's a bit of a letdown, um, but it is what it is. So I think I'm gonna hang on to the device and I might put it back in when we're gonna go camping in the new year. You know, when we've got camping trips that might just flow off the back of each other. But for now, because I'll just be driving it and stuff and you know mostly not as a full family as well so lots you know some of the time so I'm, I'm glad it's out anyway if you're considering getting one of these and none of the things I've mentioned would bother you then it's a great seat because the quality of the base is absolutely sound it's heavy I mean I've just saved about I'll probably go another 10 break. Um, they're heavy, but you can tell that they're gonna be good in a crash and they're crash tested and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's just a shame about the other things. But it is what it is, seats out. Um, what's next? Right, well, uh, while all this has been going on and uh, the indicators were installed, I did send it off for that MOT because it was completely out due to the screen not coming and stuff. I couldn't actually send it to keep the MOT flowing, but it's been off since and it went through the MOT with flying colors. But interestingly, uh, you know, everyone's been talking about those, uh, the wheels and tires and fail or pass, whatever. It passed. <laughs> so I've got LED bulbs in the main, in the main beam. We know they're good in the headlight because you've got the prism thing. But in the main beam, I've got LED lamps. I've got 255 by 35 tires on those 20 inch wheels, which are not sufficient to meet the T32 requirements. Whole other topic, not getting back into it in this video, but short and sweet. If you've been following the channel, you'll know it's a bit of a debate on this channel about whether it will or it won't pass an MOT with them. And I couldn't actually answer that question. That's not one I know the answer to truthfully. Some people say Cat5, it's not, you know, and this and that. Other people say it's going to fail. Well, it passed. Um, I didn't have time to swap them and I thought it's got to go. I sent it. It went to a legitimate garage um, and they passed it with flying colors. So the air ride's good, all the joints underneath are good, um, no advisories whatsoever. So I was pretty chuffed with that five-year-old van now. And up until a few months ago, it was a five-year-old van used daily. Now it's just kind of weekends, but it was daily up until then. So it's not like, you know, a hanger queen or something that just comes out once a year. Um, so yeah, pretty, pretty chuffed with that. Um, you know, that's for a lot of people asking about the deal with the tires and the T32 and so on. I can tell you in my experience, it passed with those wheels on. So I should be sending it just the same way again next year, instead of changing it onto this standard wheels, just to put it in MOT. Anyway, that's going to be a wrap for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more content like this. Uh, sometimes I do this kind of stuff in the background and I don't bother putting on camera, but if you would like to continue to see these sorts of videos, I'll continue to make them. Um, so let me know in the comments, but yeah, thanks for watching. If you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing today. Tap the bell so you get notified every time I upload. And don't forget to like and share the videos because it really helps the channel grow. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one real soon. Oh, by the way, um, I've put BusFest up. If you haven't already seen it, um, I'll link it here now. Don't go give that a watch because that was one of my favorite videos to make. And uh, if you've already seen it, head over and give it a like and a share because uh, I want to drive that video up. It's one of my favorite videos to make. Thanks again. See you soon. Take care.